my name is Jan, and I'm with the Moodle team of the University of Münster. And uh, recently, we've had uh, quite an interesting development project that is on integrating OwnCloud and NextCloud with Moodle, and this is what I'm going to talk about. Uh, let me do a quick show of hands first. Who of you has ever heard about OwnCloud or NextCloud? It has a general idea of what it is. Okay, quite a lot of you. Who is already using it at the institution or personally? All right, not so many, but I hope there will be more. Um, just for everyone who didn't hear about it yet, um, probably you know Dropbox. It's a cloud file sharing service where you can put all your files and basically they are wherever you are because you have a mobile app to access them. You can have clients on every computer that you have. And Nextcloud and OwnCloud do the same thing, but in that sense they are more like Moodle because OwnCloud and Nextcloud are open source projects um, that you can host on-premise which means that you can put all your files into your own kind of Dropbox and have it everywhere and take the files with you, but you retain um, all control about the files, which is pretty great, which is something that, uh, especially in Germany, is very demanded by many um, people and by many institutions. Yeah, so um, this is something that we've tackled in the, um, in the past months. Uh, and, well, a little plug at first to say where we're, going, uh, where we're coming from. Um, our Moodle installation is called LearnWeb, and it's uh, established since 2007, and basically is an, a thing in everyday life of all our teachers and students right now. Um, yeah, because we have to use it, oh, we, ha we are using it for our courses, and it's really convenient. And then, uh, three years ago, um, we have a new offering at our university that is called Skibo, well, actually Cybo, because it's the science box which is uh, an own cloud installation uh, for the University of Münster, but that is also offered for the entire, uh, for all universities in the states of North and Westphalia. So right now we have, uh, I think actually 28, sorry for the mistake here, 28 institutions that are connected to this own cloud installation um, that they can use. Uh, and I guess there will be more in the next couple of months. Um, yes, and this is basically what we're trying to do in terms of, of data protection, in terms of uh, yeah, having our files within the institution or at least within the same uh, state of Northern Westphalia. And we have a setup that allows for five petabyte of storage capacity and basically every user, every student and teacher is granted 30 gigabytes um, for free. So that's already more than, than Dropbox here. And now what we wanted to have, um, because both services are expected to, pay, uh, to play a key aspect in uh, everyday life of all our staff and students, is to have a tight integration between both, both of them. So that it's easy to use the own cloud service um, from Moodle. Uh, just to clarify a bit, uh, basically whenever I say own cloud or next cloud, um, this means that both products from a Moodle perspective are pretty much the same. From a technical perspective, of course, they aren't anymore, but both basically you share the same history. So Nextcloud has started two years ago, uh, but with the same roots as OwnCloud. And we are using uh, interfaces of OwnCloud and Nextcloud that are still the same, so everything that I say will apply to OwnCloud as well as Nextcloud um, anyway. All right, and in order to have an integration here, um, let me do a quick motivation. You have the, um, the problem, or maybe the convenience, that all your files are probably in, in own cloud or in next cloud. Um, like when you're a student, you're working on assignments together with other people, then the final product might already be in own cloud. Um, and when you want to upload this assignment, the end result to Moodle, um, then right now the thing you have to do is you have to download the file from own cloud to your own computer or to your mobile phone and then re-upload it again in Moodle. And that is basically unnecessary steps. Um, instead, we could connect Moodle directly to own cloud um, in order to let Moodle draw the files right from own cloud um, onto the Moodle server without this intermediate step. Um, there is a plugin in Moodle that can be used in order to achieve this. Um, this is called the WebDAV plugin. You can uh, actually use it because WebDAV is the file um, protocol that is used by OwnCloud and NextCloud. Um, however, this plugin has a few downsides um, because first of all, you have to uh, configure it as an administrator in order for your users, but if you do this, then there's no private storage. So everyone has access to the same files and that's not really what you want. As an administrator, you can let your users configure it themselves, but then they can basically connect to any kind of service that uses WebDAV. Um, so I don't know if you want that. And now the major technical problem is 
that it actually stores your own cloud password in the Moodle database in order to be, accessing, uh, to be able to access this repository. And this is not really something that you want because whenever something might happen to your database, then the user's passwords of OnCloud and NextCloud are basically um, in, in uh, the hands of others. So for me personally, this is a no-go. We didn't want to deploy this. We rather wanted a solution that can access um, OnCloud files without having to store the user's password in Moodle. Right. And there are approaches for this. Um, um, the approach that we took is the OAuth protocol. That is something you might already know when you were surfing the web. You have like buttons for login with, uh, with, with Google or login with Facebook. And what happens in the background is basically an OAuth process um, where you sign up to Facebook at Facebook. So only Facebook knows your Facebook password and that's the way to go. And uh, the password is then replaced by a randomly generated token that serves as a replacement for the password for any further authentic uh, for any further communication between the two servers. Um, so this is something that we wanted to implement for OnCloud and NextCloud. Actually, this wasn't possible before, but we uh, basically developed a plugin for OnCloud so that OnCloud can act as a OAuth server in order to be able to handle this authentication process. And we developed a set of plugins for Moodle that use this OAuth process in order to authenticate with NextCloud and OwnCloud, and in order to then exchange files. Um, yeah, so the result that we have are two plugins that I want to show you. Um, first of all, there is an activity module. This is not yet released to plugin directory because it's still work in progress. Um, I'd, I'd like to say that first. Um, but we think it's very useful and we will uh, release it in the next couple of months. Um, so consider the following situation. Imagine you are a teacher of, uh, of a course with like 40 students and you want to divide these students into groups. Uh, okay, so 40 is bad. Let's say 36 students, you want to divide them into groups of six. Um, they have to work on assignments, they have to collaborate of the, on this, they will maybe have uh, to write a couple of documents, maybe exchange pictures, and you want to provide them with a means of exchanging these files. Um, without them having to decide on what service to use and um, how they will go about this. So what you would probably do now is um, you uh, would create Dropbox folders for each of the six groups. Um, I say Dropbox because that would be the historical situation that was also used at our university. You would create Dropbox folders for each of the groups and then you would have to collect the email addresses or the usernames of the students at Dropbox, right? So maybe you would pass around a sheet of paper, everyone fills in their email address. And then um, when you are back at home, you will have to um, invite every member of each group to their respective folder using this email address. And if you've ever uh, yeah, typed in a set of handwritten email addresses, then you know that it is tedious. There will be a typo somewhere. Maybe you will invite the, the wrong person because of a typo or something like this. And that is actually something that can be automated very well, right? So um, what our plugin does uh, as an activity module is it connects to your own cloud. It creates uh, one group, uh, one folder per each, for each group um, individually and then invites all the members of the group um, to the OnCloud folder. Um, yeah, so that is um, what happens automatically and you will be relieved of this manual task of having to invite every single person of this group. This is presented as an activity module, um, which uh, means that it will be integrated very good in your, in your course pages. Um, and basically the process is that uh, the teachers create this activity module in order to offer this as a service to students. And so uh, students can decide to use it by clicking on this activity module in their course, then logging into OwnCloud. And in that instant, um, this folder will be shared with them. So basically every, every student member has to click on this activity, uh, every group member has to click on this activity once, then they all have this folder within their own cloud and they can work uh, with the applications that they're using on a day-to-day -day basis um, in their own cloud. So this is work in progress right now. Um, I will share the link uh, at the later slide if you're interested in the code. And maybe you can watch out there um, when, uh, for, for the release of this plugin if you're interested in this. 
The other thing is actually ready um, and has been published since uh, October, if I'm not mistaken, to the plugin directory. This is a very simple means of integrating Moodle and OwnCloud um, because it allows this aspect of directly accessing OwnCloud files from within Moodle without this intermediate step of copying things to your computer. Um, as I said, this is a passwordless um, authentication strategy. So if you have the uh, Moodle file picker, um, the first thing you will be presented with is a log into your account button. And you click on that, um, and this takes you in a separate um, window to your Nextcloud installation. Um, you will have to type in your Nextcloud username and password there. So this is shared only with Nextcloud and not with Moodle. And then Nextcloud asks you whether you want to grant access to Moodle accessing your files um, as a server-sided application. As a user, you click on Grant Access, and then the next thing you see is the file picker with all the files that you have uh, in your next cloud, and you can select from these files um, and directly upload them into Moodle. Um, so this is just for comparison. On the, on the lower right, you can see the, your next cloud folder with all the files that you have uploaded there, and there's one file that has actually been shared with another person probably, and on Moodle you see the exact same files uh, showing up. All right. Um, yeah, so when you select one of these files here, you are presented with two options right now. One option is just as you would regularly interact with a file, you can upload it, which means that Moodle will download a copy from this file from your next cloud. Um, and then put this into the file here that we talked about in the last presentation and create basically a, 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 an entire copy of the file within Moodle. That is quite useful, for example, if you want to make sure that the file isn't tampered with later on. For example, in, uh, in assignments, um, then it's very important that this is a hard copy of the file that cannot be changed after submission um, by students. Uh, and the alternative option is you can also create a link to this file, which might be nice when you are a teacher um, and you want to upload your presentation to the Moodle course. And whenever you make changes to your presentation, you want them to be reflected in Moodle as well. So that is what happens when, um, you, when you create a link to the file, because whenever changes are made to the file, um, the file hasn't to, uh, doesn't need to be changed in Moodle. Um, it's just the same link to the same kind of file, and the, uh, the changes will appear in Moodle um, right away. Uh, yes, plugins have the option of, uh, of, of prohibiting this linking mode, and for example, Mod Assign is doing exactly that in order to prevent uh, students from, from, from uploading files that they can change later on. In the back end, um, it works like this. We are also using the WebDAV protocol in order to communicate with the file system of OwnCloud. Um, the WebDAV protocol is used in order to download the files uh, um, into Moodle. And when we are talking about linking, then what happens in the background is we use a programming interface that is offered by OwnCloud and NextCloud, which is called the OCS API. And what happens in the background is it creates a share in Nextcloud, so a public share. You might know this from Dropbox as well. Um, basically, it creates a link, a URL that is randomly generated that is hard to guess. Um, and this link is then copied into Moodle. Okay, so the actual file isn't really reflected only by this link. Um, you have to know, of course, this is always a public URL. Um, there is no, no listing of public URLs in an OwnCloud directory, but it's always possible to guess this URL or um, the first student who accesses this file through Moodle will also know the URL then and can maybe pass it on to others. So this is strictly not, for, not intended for something that needs to remain private within your course, um, but that could still be a very, a very useful feature, right? All right, so here are some useful links. First of all, this repository is available on the plugin directory. You can uh, look for OwnCloud or for NextCloud. 
And uh, actually, we've published several versions, and we will continue to publish several versions of this um, in order to provide you with the proper branding. So if you're using an on-cloud installation, you would probably um, download um, the, the on-cloud version. And if you have a next cloud installation, you would want to download the next cloud version. The only thing that's really different is the icon that is presented in the file picker. So that your users will have something that can reflect um, yeah, your actual installation and that they recognize, right? Um, then there's the collaborative folders activity, just if you're curious about the code or if you want to well, maybe contribute to this. Um, but we will hope to publish this in the next couple of months. And in case you have uh, like problems with installing any of these, uh, we've started to assemble uh, a wiki in the Moodle docs um, with, a few, um, with a few hurdles that you might come across and that uh, we hope will help you solve uh, installation issues if you have any. All right, um, then I want to give credit to the ones who have actually initially developed this because we at the University of Münster, we have, uh, um, we have now taken over maintenance and we will continue to develop and maintain these plugins. But uh, initially, um, this was actually made by a student group. So we had uh, five students from the University of Münster who did this as part of the classes in uh, Information Systems Bachelor program where for a semester they, um, yeah, they had to work on a project, and in this case the project were the Moodle uh, own cloud integration plugins. So this is actually us at the, university, uh, at the Technical University of Berlin where the own cloud conference happened and where we got together with the own cloud developer guys uh, who helped us a lot in implementing this. And there's us sitting in the lecture hall, but anyway. <laughs> All right, that's it from me. If you have any questions, feel free to ask right now or maybe later at the conference, and here are my details if you want to reach me. Thank you. Questions? There's one up there. What? One question up there. Hi, a uh, question about the security aspects you were mentioning about it creating the public folders. Um, is that going to be the same on the new pub plugin that's coming out where you're allowing an area for five or six students to uh, collaborate w within a course? Will that be a public folder as well? Pardon, I don't think I got the question, sorry. Uh, I was, it's a question about the security aspects yeah. where you're saying that I think the second pl the, the plugin that's available already uh, effectively creates a public folder, and so it's not somewhere to, for a way of sharing, in, in, you, of a way of sharing uh, confidential documents. Do you mean the the collaborative folders part, or this linking to a repository? The linking to repository, yeah. Okay. Um, well, you're linking only to inv individual files. But uh, well, what my, my question is, if the, the collaborative folders one, where you create within uh, you're the new plugin that hasn't been uh, yeah. published yet. Uh, but from what I understand, you're creating folders within Moodle for a group of students to access. Will those, will, is that secure? Okay. Or are there, ways, are there ways that people could get into it by either guessing the URL or if somebody shared the URL? No, other people won't have a chance to access them. Um, the collaborative folder shares, uh, creates folders in own cloud or next cloud and um, shares them with all the students who are involved in a group privately. So there's no way to, to access them if you aren't in this group in Moodle. So this is really tightly coupled into this Moodle group system, and then there are only private chairs. Right, okay, thanks. Any further questions? Martin. <laughs> Um, thank you, Jan. Uh, I just wanted to say uh, this is a really cool initiative. We've been, uh, I've been meeting with the NextCloud uh, CEO and team, and we're working on, uh, we both want to work a lot closer together, and we have intention to over the coming year or two. I think NextCloud is the best option 
next cloud, own cloud. So there was a fork, if you, if you don't know. Um, I, I would put all my money on next cloud. But um, that is the best option going forward. If you want to get off Google Drive or Office 365, uh, those repositories, uh, and get into an open thing, Nextcloud is the thing that's leading the pack. So uh, Jan, who's stepped up uh, with the University of uh, Munster to, to do this integration is super helpful and uh, very important. And I would love to see if anyone's interested in making that integration super awesome, um, that talk to this guy and help, because I think it'd be a great project to have. As you know, Moodle and Nextcloud together are a quite dynamite combination. Thanks for the encouraging remark. <laughs> Just carrying on from Martin's point a bit, do you think, because Nextcloud and OwnCloud support apps within that side of the platform as well, do you see any scope for creating a Moodle plugin within Nextcloud to provide any sort of functionality there? Uh, you mean for this functionality exactly, well, just, or just for, for further just, functionality? Just for in general, for well, Moodle would, That integration. would always be possible, of course. Um, OwnCloud and Nextcloud are both very extendable through this app system. So what we call plugins are apps in OwnCloud and Nextcloud. And you can always uh, think of very interesting integration scenarios. So for example, one app they, they have developed is, um, um, is uh, live editing features for documents. So like Google Drive document editing, but in Nextcloud and OwnCloud. And I would very much like to see a plugin that would support this, for example. Uh, but I think we would need to discuss on where to integrate this in Moodle exactly and what, uh, how this would bring any benefits um, cool. to make this perfect. That might be a good topic for the Dev Jam. Definitely. <laughs> uh, question, could this be integrated into the group assignment? Uh, to create assignments for groups? Could that be, I could say, a part? As an option, I, I would consider this a part, but I would basically separate the functionality into two different things. Yeah, but you could always separate. very well use a combination of both collaborative folders and a group assignment like right next to each other, right? So you have the collaborative folders in order to collaboratively create documents that will later be submitted as part of the group assignment. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Uh, you mentioned that it's possible to disable linking uh, to the files. Is it possible to disable copying of the files? Uh, like I if, think so, if somebody are, wants huh? to link to a few gigabyte file, I would like to disable. Just yes. offer an, uh, Nextcloud as an option to mm -hmm. share big files mm -hmm. to keep them off the Moodle. That would be an interesting addition to this plugin. So it's not possible as of now, especially not on a per file basis. But of course, it would be great to, to like disable uploading for every file that's larger than your upload limit and just linking them. I think in, in effectively, I've never tried this, but effectively, I guess, uploading a file that is larger than the limit will fail, but probably only after it has been uploaded. So actually, it would be yeah, too late. But you can find out how large this file is from OwnCloud. It will create before. an error and then yeah. But problem. it's a good, good idea for an extension of this plugin. Thanks. I have a question also. So have you tried um, with the mobile app that this uh, file linking with uh, Nextcloud it works? Um, no, we haven't tried this so far because we aren't <laughs> using the Moodle mobile app yet. Um, but that would be very interesting to try out. I don't know, do you have support for repositories in general in the mobile app? Yeah, in, you know that in uh, Moodle 3.3 uh, we include support for uh, OneDrive and Google Drive and we, di we did some enhancements in the mobile app to support uh, file linking and mm -hmm. offline off files. So right now if you implement a um, repository plugin like uh, this one, like Nextcloud, mm -hmm. um, you can serve files in different ways. You can serve an offline version of the file that will be, uh, so for example, if you are doing uh, linking, mm -hmm. instead doing a redirection, because this is not going to work offline, mm -hmm. you will generate an offline version of this document. Mm -hmm. So you will be able to use it offline in the mobile app. So the mobile app would follow this link and download the contents from the yeah, link. Yeah. So uh, if if yeah, if you are um, 
So uh, we have a special parameter in the mobile app. So if we are offline, oh, so if you are downloading a course for offline, we pass a special parameter to the repository. Sorry, okay. the alarm of this. <laughs> we should finish. Um, there is a special param parameter that is called uh, offline. So instead of doing the redirection, in that case, you should create an offline version of the document. Mm -hmm. So for example, in Google Drive, instead of redirecting to a PDF file, mm -hmm. you return a PDF path that mm -hmm. we don't load in the app. Mm -hmm. So if, if when you are using the app, if you are offline, we display the offline version of the document. Mm -hmm. But if you are connected, we follow the right direction. Okay. Yeah. So that's, this is how it works for supporting offline documents mm -hmm. in the mobile app. Mm -hmm. But we can talk I, I, I would assume this would work, but I think we should check it out together and maybe yeah. we'll talk about it. But it, was, it would be really great to see support for this repository uh, in the mobile app as well, of course, because yeah. that's where it's most helpful, I guess. This. Right. Thanks. Thank you.